I'm sick of all these witches and warlocks. They're full of shit. Pumpkin popsums. I'm sick of it. You keep interrupting me. And all of it's locked. Because you're lying. That's why. Oh, there's energy. And oh, now we're done with trolls. You said he was the Messiah. You said he was invincible. I will not suffer your cute people after this. I know what you are day one. I know what you are now. Witches and warlocks are full of shit. Pumpkin popsums. I'm sick of it. Witches and warlocks, you're full of shit. Pumpkin popsums, I'm sick of it. You keep interrupting me. And all of it's lies. Because you're lying. That's why. Witches and warlocks, you're full of shit. Pumpkin popsums, I'm sick of it. You keep interrupting me. And all of it's lies. Because you're lying. That's why. Because every god thing.
Go tell that long tongue liar. Go and tell that midnight rider. Tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell them that God's gonna cut you down. Tell them that God's gonna cut you down. Tell them that God's gonna cut you down. I've seen a back and forth turn pretty nasty, I'm gonna say. You look like you've been crying. You keep spinning things. You're the ones that are sitting around and trying to get a reaction out of me. And then when I stopped giving you reactions, you fabricated falsified stories, falsified emails, acted on my behalf, pretended to be me okay. because they- well, The problem is, the problem is it's control. more than about you and me, Liam, because you do, you're striking yeah. a lossy, you struck Nasser, yes. And I will Miller. strike anyone who continues there. to steal my content. And All you do is sit around and play. Nintendo because they don't understand the difference between my property and fucking Golden Sun. They're that retarded. Oh, you didn't know I knew about that, John. What? Oh, look at that big face. Oh, whoa, Liam might know more than I. Oh, I'm here. Liam, my... I've oh, never reported your campaign to John. anybody. You're fucked, mate. You are fucked. I am going to bury you. I'm going to bury whoa. you to all of these parasites that have been trying to destroy my whoa. life for years and have been actively preying on the customer and creating outrage and manipulating Liam, this people. is psycho, stop you it. You are a parasite. It's right to scream with an EMCA. They got the car with an EMCA. Don't try to run the dice. You will break off your eyes. I can do it for the spike. Fight you? Set up <laughs> in a ring. No gloves, and I'll take down the strike. There you go. And I will clear my name there, and that'll be the end of it. your name of what? Of You're the only the one making accusations. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, right. But you guys need to go the fuck away and let me work. And John, you've got to fight me. Or I'm, I'm not, not going to fight you, down. dude. I, I know you're not crazy. because you're a pussy and you're a coward. Channel. I want the blood on my fucking hands of this fat loser. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. <laughs> oh, man, that was something good. Oh, I like that. All right. Thank I, you, Liam, by the way. Again. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Good morning to you. It's me, uh, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, 30-year veteran of the comic book industry, creator of Cyberfrog, owner, president, EIC, CEO, all caps comics. 
and uh, you know, listen, it's a draw stream. We're working on a page together right now. We haven't done one of these in a little while. Haven't done a little draw stream in a while, but it's time to do a draw stream. And it's time to do many draw streams. Why not? Uh, <clears throat> hi, Queef Latina says, yeah, another live stream. Another one. Yeah, we just keep going, don't we? We just keep going live. We just keep staying in touch with each other and saying, hello, how do you do? Uh, holy cow, it's five in the morning. Yeah, I, I took a little bit of a nap. Woke up and got right back to work. Uh, thoroughly enjoying um, what I'm doing here today. Really enjoying Cyberfrog. How are you guys doing? Good morning, guys. Uh, taking a little break from getting drunk and high, eh? I'll tell you a secret. I was not drunk or high. Uh, so, yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm very, very busy. I, you know, I did have a nice uh, couple of beers last night, but uh, that's about it. I mean, I really, uh, I'm staying very sober and getting my work done. Got a lot to do. Got to get Rainbow the Brute finished. And uh, get all this stuff done and out to people. Enjoying myself. Uh, Heavy Merlin says, woke up and ruined ballers. Oof. I mean, if you say so. That show had been going on forever. And uh, I, I kind of woke up and I saw that uh, they had sent me the link like at I don't know, midnight or something. Asking me to come in and save their show. So I had to do it, man. Those guys are my friends. It's very important. So at the Copa. Copa Cabana. I put on a little bit of gay music here. What do I do this? I turn it down real quiet. Just play this for a while. I like it. It's oh. mellow. Doggy style now. Jail. Oh. To all the ladies in the house. Another day in the ghetto. But look outside and I'm already upset. It looks about 102, it's a Saturday and Biggie ain't got nothing to do, uh, I'm interrupted by a phone ring, sometimes I wish I never got the motherfucking thing, hello, hello, can I speak to Biggie, yo, who this time he yo, call back, I'm busy, why don't you hit me on the box a little later, while stuff got dressed, hits the elevator, steps out, it's the same old scene, don't fiend, crack fiend, I witness new team, I seen the honey with the pop looking but it's long, I know she looked McGregor with the clothes I bought, sitting all thick.
At least it is for me. And if you torture my asshole long enough till it looks like a wizard's sleeve, oh, pagan can do miracles. Just you wait and see. Competition in the bedroom. I hope I don't chip a two.
have to write a song here. Uh, <laughs> this is your part. Know the lyrics of the song. This right. could be on a kar karaoke in 20 I'm years. I'm gonna f you. I'm gonna f your little hole. I'm not saying. <laughs> Why did this exist in the world? I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fuck your little hole. I know you like it. Say it. Say it. Say that you like me to fuck your tiny hole. With my big cock, I know you like it. Come on, say it. You know I like to hear it. Say it. I know. As cold as ice Shadows of a man A face through a window Crying in the night The night goes into morning Just another day Happy people pass my way Looking in their eyes I see a memory I never realized How happy you made I'm standing on the edge of time I walked away when love was mine Caught up in a world of uphill climbing Tears are on my mind Nothing is round in no You came and you gave without taking But I sent you Shake it. 
All right, hold on a second, guys. All right, let me pause this for a minute. All right, first of all, hi, everybody. Welcome uh, welcome to my uh, live stream here. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of drawing today, working on uh, CyberFrog 3, and uh, just having a good time. <clears throat> I thought I'd turn the camera on. I haven't done one of these in a little while. Like, just sit down and just draw, work on a page on camera. It's not something I'm comfortable doing. I, I think, you know, uh, it's a kind of a weird thing to be observed when you're sitting there pecking away at a page like I do. Um, but uh, I do it anyway. I used to do it. I did it for Cyberfrog 1, Cyberfrog 2. We're going to do it for Cyberfrog 3 every now and then, too. I'm, I'm glad you guys are up with me here at 520 in the morning. Let me see. We've got some super chats. Uh, stop. Check if Tiny Baby Sloth is banned. Thanks. Uh, old man yelling at crowd, the uh, clouds says, uh, is this song from the Preston saga? I, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, both two songs from the Preston saga. Um, Matt for $10 says, Hey, EVS been a fan and a backer of CG for a long time tonight. I lost my cat in my arms. Oh no. And I could use some love from the CG community. I recently joined Twitter and started a YouTube channel. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your cat. It's really hard to lose a pet. Uh, and you're welcome here. You know, I hope you have fun. Everybody here is pretty nice for the most part. Uh, so, uh, God bless, brother. Terrible. Uh, wow, says NZ guy. Yeah, it is, uh, it is something else. Uh, let me see here. Of course goes Fabio. Uh, Ethan's drawing Red Extermination by now. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you haven't backed Red Extermination, please do that. Uh, do so. Link is in the description. Reserve your copy today. Uh, Normie Nerd says, good morning, Uncle E and chat. Uh, I'm going to work myself. Cool. All right. Enjoy yourself. Uh, old man yelling in clouds again. That art is amazing. Damn, Red Extermination is going to be awesome. Um, Serangus Fungus says, true, Ethan. Why is Tiny Baby Sloth banned? Seemed a fine individual. You know, you got me. I, I don't do any of the banning around here. It's... <laughs> I'm not the one doing this. It kind of annoys me uh, because uh, it would be my mods doing this if anyone is doing this. Uh, there are no banned guests on StreamYards that I can see. And people get banned and then, or, you know, and sometimes uh, they say, and people say, hey, what happened? And I got to go find them. And uh, I don't enjoy doing that because oftentimes I can't even find them. So, uh, I don't know. People fucking with me here? Uh, let me see here. I just don't. Tiny Baby Sloth. I'm going to take a look and see if Tiny Baby Sloth shows up in my band section. And if Tiny Baby Sloth does, I will unban Tiny Baby Sloth. I did not ban this person. If not, I'm just not going to care. Oh, look at this. There they are. Banned. They're now unbanned. Let's see if I recognize anybody else here that is banned that should not be banned. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, all right. A lot of people banned that I don't. I don't know. Uh, then you've got people named suck the n words d. Uh, that, you know, that person should be banned. That's proper. A lot of, uh, adult dating sites. Uh, I see here. Yeah, I don't know. Wow, a lot of people banned. Okay, I'm happy. Um, Alright, so uh, yeah, Tiny Baby Sloth unbanned. 
I'm shocked by this. I had no idea. Uh, people are blaming uh, Sheila aliens for the uh, unwanted banning. I'm willing to do that. Serangus fungus is being serious. Oh, I know you're being serious. But this happens a lot. People will go, why is this person banned? And it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't I don't ban people. Uh, it's uh, my mods. It would be my mods. Uh, and, you know, that's uh, frustrating. i got to start unmodding people. I go through every now and then and I'll just, like, unmod people. I'll do a kind of uh, a hammer purge. <laughs> or a wrench purge, I mean. Uh, Eric Medved says, what's the status on the wrecked planet boxes? Uh, any day now. Uh, we have the wreck planet boxes. We're just waiting for Salamandroid. That thing should be here absolutely any day now. Um, yeah. Perth Comics says it wasn't me. Hey, Perth Comics, I saw the video that you made. I guess there's a, a lot of people were confused about it. So I had to go and look. They're like, what were you doing in that Purge video or Perth video? And yeah, there's a video of me. I was at the uh, Trump inauguration. And I was on the streets of Washington, D.C. This was right be before Antifa came in and started setting fire to everything. But I ended up in a bunch of, in the background of a bunch of videos. I said, who's this pretty, uh, who is this pretty woman arguing with Muslims? And I think it was Lauren Southern. But, I mean, she was kind of unknown back then. She wasn't as uh, big as she is now. And so I kind of stood there and I knew where the cameras were. Uh, and so I decided to just stand right in the back of like be in the frame. Uh, and I was very drunk, very, very drunk. It was fun. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, that video turned up. I, I thought it was gone, but, uh, I guess you found the video. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. He's talking like a normal person now. Sorry for direct. What? What the hell are you guys doing? Uh, all right, hold on. Let me catch up. Uh, there's Tiny Baby Sloth. Thank you to... Uh, oh, my God. Look at you. You had the... I, I was there when you made this uh, cool avatar. Thank you. Um, and anyone else who tried to help. Thanks, Ethan. Yeah, it wasn't me. Sorry about that. I was stupid. You're a super chatter. Um, Jimmy Max blames Mark Walters, I think. Uh, the only people I ever ban are Alfred Ortiz and Mark Walters when uh, EBS finally gives me permission. Mark, uh, Matt Walters. Yeah, Mark Walters. Uh, Alfred Ortiz uh, is a pill, but like uh, he's allowed to stick around. I think I've, did I perma ban him? I think he's still here. Every now and then I time him out, but I don't think I've ever perma banned him. And in any case, he's got a bunch of different uh, screen names. Mm -hmm. Let me see, Perth says, oh yeah, someone thought it was taken down, so I added it and re-upped it. Okay, that's good. At least it's, like, permanently somewhere. I mean, that's a weird video, because, I, you know, at the time that I was in that video, I, I didn't really have a YouTube presence, but now I do, so it's kind of relevant that I'm in the background. <laughs> it's fucking just lurking around in the background of this uh, America first. Or was it the blaze? Like, what is this? What was that? Uh, what was she there on behalf of? It's kind of funny. Well, let me see here. Got a copy of Rec Planet the other day. I loved it. Can't wait to read three. What's the word on Snowman? Uh, Snowman, uh, Matt sent over all the files. Uh, so we're going through now. We're trying to, I don't know, we're putting it together. But it's ready to print. I think he sent over a printable file. And uh, I think he's got two more covers. He, he said, uh, I got these two other covers and I want to do like closeout variants or something. So I guess what we're going to do or what he wants me to do is put these two snowman, and they're both great covers, put these two snowman covers up on the campaign and like maybe run it for 48 hours and then close down the campaign. I think that's an okay idea before we go to print. Um, was it Rebel Media? That's right. Is Rebel Media still around? I had a good time. I was just uh, out there looking for trouble. It's before the world kind of fell apart. <laughs> it's before everything got weird. Uh, and it has gotten weird. 
Um, by the way, uh, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of a problem. My camera, my webcam died. Finally gone. Like just uh, the camera that I've been using for years now on, on YouTube. Finally just kind of kicked the bucket. So I got this camera here, which is my downward facing camera. And I, I, I put it on the... the I put it on the tripod the other day and just tried it. I don't like it. So I ordered another camera and the camera will be here on Monday. Uh, just in time for Comics Gate Kings. But in the meantime, I guess, uh, you know, my live streaming is going to be all like draw streams, which suits me because, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to work. I see everybody else. The weird thing is when I'm drawing, I see other people like live streaming and stuff and I get angry at them. Like I saw the ballers having a good time live streaming and I just wanted to ruin it because I'm like, why are you guys doing this? Why aren't you drawing? You guys should be drawing like I have to. Getting work done. Completely inspired. This whole scene that I'm working on right now is a flashback scene. Um, back to 1996. And you're going to see like Heather's... Um, and the reason for it is... Like, you really need to know, I realize it's like, you really need to know what you lost, like, in 2018. Like, when we're, when we're moving forward with Wreck Planet, it's all fine and good, but, you know, all, all we really have to talk about, like, how things used to be and how Cyberfrog operated as a superhero and, and Heather, how Heather functioned as his friend and their relationship, all we have is what Chelsea said in Blood Honey. Uh, so, I want to do a whole scene where you just see like, you know, Heather and Cyberfrog hanging out and then jumping into action, having to do something super heroic. Uh, what it, what it's like when Chelsin, um, you know, signs on uh, to Cyberfrog, turns him on and then, you know, sort of uh, rapid, rapid evolves him and all this stuff. All the things that he can no longer do. It's important that you see it um, in context so that you know, like when we cut to the uh, present day and, and what's going on with them, you know what's missing. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a whole sequence that is like from the nineties, there's young Heather, you know, stuff like this, um, to sort of just say, this is what it was like in the nineties. Warts and all is weird. Like as much as, uh, it's fun to, uh, um, you know, to read warts and all, it, it isn't quite right. Like cyber frog is mean to Heather in that book. And I don't know, like, I don't really, like, I, I look back on it and I, I don't think it's like the perfect representation of how, the, how things actually went canon wise for them so um you know this kind of a thing doing a, a scene like this is really really i think it's like helpful to sort of ground the whole world into uh two segments of time like the past actually there are three segments of time there's the 90s there's the whole period of time in which cyberfrog was asleep and we're going to cover that in salamandroid 2 um, well, actually in the whole Salamandroid series, Death Sting covers some of it too. And then, you know, present time, which is 2018, the present, you know. So it's good to, to spend a little bit of time in, in the 1990s. Um... <laughs> Warts and all is little old lady uh, is old lady Lily telling people the legend of Cyberfrog. That's a theory. Um, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just kind of like a a take on uh, like there. I don't think there's any way to really present it as canon. You know, it just isn't real. I think all you need to do, because I'm worried people do uh, kind of say, how do I get into Cyberfrog? And I'm like, before I can even answer them, they've already purchased warts and all. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not it. I mean, that's the last thing that you should read. Like after you read Blood, Honey, and Wreck Planet, then, you know, go ahead and read warts and all for fun. But it, it's not relevant, you know, it's not part of the, it's not really part of the story. M moving forward, you know. All right, I got my glasses.
Skip Edward says, have you heard any good San Diego Comic-Con stories from this weekend? No, not yet. I mean, I, I guess everybody's still there. Uh, I imagine when uh, the weekend's over. I'm very jealous. Like, I kind of wanted to go this year. Starting to feel like going to conventions again. I really didn't feel like it. But uh, it's, I'm you know, I'm kind of getting the little, the vibe that I want to go. And, and the reason why is because I want people to see what we're doing here. You know, I, I think Cyberfrog is great. I think the stuff that we're making is amazing. And I want everybody to see it. You know, we're, we're just doing stuff for each other at this point. Um, you know, the backers all know Cyberfrog. But until we get out there and present it to a sort of just uh, an audience that's just walking by, uh, hand sell Cyberfrog to people. And I, I got a little taste of that at Garden State Comic Fest, and it was fun. I mean, you know, there were kids that that really love Cyber Frog that just caught a glimpse of him and, and just bought everything. So I feel like we should do that. Uh, Andrea likes the idea uh, of going out and just um, hand selling Cyber Frog, but the problem is we, we don't know how to make it feasible yet. Um, I mean, really, what I would have to do, I guess, is I would have to truck uh, a whole lot of Cyberfrog merch cross-country. I'd have to have a big booth. And, I mean, I would have to... Maybe I would drive my uh, Sprinter van across country. That's like a five-day drive. I, I mean, uh, it could be worth it. I mean, if I made a whole lot of money there, it could be worth it, but... It's still like a long haul. I, I don't get how people do it. But, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, Kevin Ryan says, ask Tucci. I will. I'm going to start asking, like, you know, because Bill Tucci does, Billy Tucci does have a, a lot of stuff. I don't know if he makes the drive. I don't think he does. I think he, he got on an airplane. Did he just like uh, ship all of his stuff there ahead of time? I've heard people do that. Just pallet everything and ship it over to uh, San Diego. Yeah, I really don't know. I'm just used to going to conventions as an artist, sitting down and drawing for people. I, I've never had a, a, a booth before, you know, where I was selling product. And I would have to ship a lot of stuff. And that's the other thing. Like, is it worth it? Just the cost of shipping a crate of action figures out. A lot of questions. I don't know. Any baby sloth says uh, it's worth it uh, just to crush your enemies. Hmm. Uh, you need to your own cyber frog site. Uh, it's not how much money you make at the convention. It's the exposure you get to new customers. Yeah, that's one way to look at it for sure. Um, did you actually re redraw the stinger in cyber frog's head? Yes. 
I did to make it uh, work. I just kind of moved it over a little bit. Uh, I thought the idea of having Mikey drive stuff out was a good one. Uh, I don't know if I, like, Mikey is, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want Mikey to drive across country with all my stuff. <laughs> Maybe with Hunter in there, too. Hmm. No. Don't really know yet. Let me see here. Oh, God. I think I'm going to watch Liam Gray while I'm drawing. Let's see how this goes. They need it is just oh, it's ridiculous. Like so much progress could have been made if Mikasa just weren't under that spell of of um. All right. Ackerman's. I just need noise in the background. Liam is streaming right now. Killed me. Anyway, uh, I yeah. So I really liked Attack on Titan for the world it built, where it went eventually. This guy Blue Samurai, who's um, talking right now, uh, really hates you know, me, and I don't know why. He and he also just runs off at the mouth. Great. And then, like, uh, he does not you know, stop I, I talking. Everything after that, but I don't know why Liam invites of, him on uh, because uh, outside of the things I liked, it really boiled down to I can't. Whenever he's on Liam's himself, show, like he really just talks and talks and so talks well and doesn't take a breath. So well developed. Uh, if you read the comic that is the original, uh, Liam has six viewers right now. With the first idea, hold on, I gotta go get a circle find out, If you go back and, and reread the last bits of, of the manga, or sorry, the first bits of the, of the real manga. Um, you realize he he took time to build his entire world between that first little demo and actually writing the real manga because so much stuff yeah. in the first five uh, chapters refer you know requires the information that comes out later. It's not a reverse engineering by the end of the series. So like I, yeah, I I think he's, he did a great job and it's really cool. All right, I'm back. But it's so painful to get through parts of it because of the whininess. Just so, and then shush. to find out later that like. Aaron never outgrows the whininess. Oh, but he has these secret hidden other motives that you discover by the end of the, the show it, or by, by the mm -hmm. end of the book. I'm just going like, this is, yeah, that, that's very cute. It's Liam's <laughs> show. Let Liam <laughs> talk. Like, this is just so ridiculous to have to put up with his whininess until, or through all, what, 34 volumes. Also, and then spoilers. I don't... You guys want to you yeah. click away because I'm about to give spoilers here. But then uh, sure. he turns into Nazi King, you know, yeah. genocide man. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, uh, but you know why that happened? Do you know the, the story behind that? I reported on this. I was one of the first YouTube channels. Geek report. Avenger says your haters seem like kind of crazy, but they're probably just here. good folks. But, uh, they just got banned. They might not be as good of a character as Tiny Baby Sloth. Yeah, maybe. I don't. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't ban these people. I don't. That's <laughs> like, I got a message from Liam. Liam sent me an email two days ago. Uh, and Liam was just like upset. What was he mad about? Uh, he was mad that like, um, I can't remember what he was mad about, but he was, he was basically saying, I can't believe that you took these people's sides over mine. And I don't know what he's talking about. Like my, my job is, uh, you know, the guy who owns the trademark of comics gate is to take nobody's side over somebody else's side. My job is to just basically be like, and it's, it's a challenge because there are people who do retarded stuff in this space and it's hard. It's really hard to just remain neutral. I have, I've had to remain neutral when clearly there were retarded people doing retarded stuff just recently. Uh, and, uh, a couple, like three times I've had to do that and just be like, it's okay. You know, like, uh, everybody's cool. I, I, I can't just take sides and, you know, cause people are just going to get disjointed with their noses again. It's, I, I got to just stay cool with people. And like, there are guys like Liam and Liam's whole thing is why did you choose like to Liam? Like, you know, you chose NASA Rabati over me. And it's like, no, I wouldn't, have, I would have thrown both of you into a wood chipper. I, I just have to be cool with everyone. If you're somebody who can't coexist with another dude, then, you know, in comic skate, then that's your problem, dude. It's not you. I mean, it's not me. It's you. But, uh, so what happened was, um, the assistant, the guy's assistant Hold on. got out Hold on. Let me get and live uh, with him here. 
No, I can't, but I did when I did the video on it. You know what I mean? I, I read it all out, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was. Okay. Um. So one thing I liked about... uh, All right. I like how people tend to agree... All right, uh, how do I say this? I noticed that there were you know younger kids around around uh, the books grabbing them uh, mm-hmm. from the shelf in the library because I'd always go into the library and then just be like okay you know where's the next volume and there's some kid reading a volume of it or whatever and so I'd over I'd overhear kids talking and I'm I'm like yeah little kids are reading this extremely adult book hey Lion Ratten how you doing and uh, mm-hmm. and then these guys are all terrible the, for the next thing I I, I I hear them talk about how cool it is with all these giants and whatnot and this is about by the time volume 12 was out but I wasn't caught up to that I was still re- trying to catch up to about volume eight and yeah. I, I was thinking these kids don't understand so far in this book that it's a treat maybe I was up to volume 12 by then but the, the first the big reveal of there being another Titan shifter, as they called them, hadn't come out yet in what I had read so far. So just with all the whiny arguing and screaming that Aaron had done about, um, I deserve freedom because I was born into this world and stuff like that. Hey, William. Uh, hey, Blue. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing well. But he, uh, I, I remember laughing at the kids in my head thinking they don't understand that this is really a treatise on the nature of freedom because it's just an argument back and forth exploring the two but not telling you what to think mm. and then this gets bigger in a, in a moment yeah. um aaron was just constantly decrying that his freedom had to be absolute no limitations on him as a person mm-hmm. and so the walls were offensive but he learned that ideology from being inside walls i mean he taught it to himself in a way um mm-hmm. what i what got me was what if you take that to its nth degree and i like i'm just going to spoil a bunch of this though i or the middle part of this the checkpoint says be nice Ethan. he's just a little koala guy um, hail graham nolan well what marcus c anyway you know uh i like i am nice in the middle of the series where yes they get outside the walls and yes they make it to the sea and then immediately aaron says well wherever all this oppression is coming from whatever the details i've skipped it's coming from over there across the sea, so I have to go destroy it. So it's it's this libertarian-ish, and I don't know what generation or version of libertarianism um, in America or in, or in Europe, but it's this, this argument over if there's no limit on your freedom, then you're living only for yourself and you will seek out to destroy the world, which is what Aaron does. He seeks to destroy the world. Aaron now, he has this other seeks to destroy the world. That I haven't read in the books yet about... Because there's no um, limit to his freedom. I collected them all now. I just need to read through them. I, I got the big versions, not the mini ones. But um, you see how yeah, I'm saying really he just keeps talking and talking and talking. This guy, him in order to get rid of the Titan. He doesn't even take a breath. It's just like a fucking wall of uh, verbal way, text. It's a big setup, and he's trying to make it work. But on the outside, it all is. You, you can't even imagine how boring you are, dude. Freedom, and and so you have no like no conception, like. It's a nice Not even people who love you would like want to listen to this. Explore different ways that things can go. Horrendous. So I really appreciate what the writer did in going in all these different directions at once to just let people explore, thinking through all the directions you could go in life yourself. It's Try to just you know recognize these things people. about yourselves. You know, it's like how all these different characters react. Yeah, do I to talk too much? Even though it is pretty he- uh, pretty heavy with uh, are the Rhina things that are coming out of my mouth interesting? and why he gets suicidal and all that. So yeah, it's it's. I think it's a great piece of literature, even though I can't stand Aaron. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I I understand. It's, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. It's funny because wasn't I'm, listening. I'm essentially, <laughs> I'm like the worst person to ask about Attack of Titan because the only thing I've heard is the main theme, which yeah is a banger. Um, <laughs> and other than that, I just know the basic gist of everything probably don't intend to watch it either you know i was really excited for it when it first came out and i thought hey this is like you know i'm looking at it with, uh Odie and i were looking at it for um for movement for esper because i was like you know i want him to the be great like swinging Odie. himself around like throwing Miss himself Odie. around with his telekinesis like he doesn't fly or anything you know so kind of like web slinging but more like uh more like sort of pulling and throwing himself and mm-hmm. uh 
I think it was Scotsman that said, oh, like Attack on Titan. And I went, hold on, yeah, maybe a bit. And we went and we looked and went, yeah, like, yeah. So Odie was, like, looking at that for a bit for, like, how we want Esper to move around, you know, like that 3D maneuver gear in there. But, uh, Got yeah, six I was, thought, hey, this has so much promise. This has so so much promise. So I started watching the anime, and then I went and I read the manga. And I was like, uh, find it hard to keep, to, to keep rooted in this. And then the second season came out. And uh, the second season came out, and it was CGI. And that sort of put me off a little bit because I really don't yeah. like CGI. Uh, and by the time the third season was out, I just didn't care. Like, I was like, mm. I just, like fuck, you know. When the uh, – I, I, I used to watch a bunch of videos on, um, on theories for it and all this other stuff, and I was involved in the community in that way. It was fun. But uh, by the end, I was just like, oh, what a mess. What an absolute fucking mess this turned into. Like, I, I I think the series would have been better if they never made Eren a fucking Titan. Like, that's that's where I think they went wrong. They should have, at episode four or episode two or whatever it was, where they turned him into a Titan, they should never never have done that. Just keep him as a dude in the military fighting against these fucking things. That would have been... So you wanted him as a Batman-esque protagonist, completely outgunned, yeah. but, <laughs> yeah. you know, say... Staying alive through sheer moxie and brains. Trencher says yeah, exactly, even the enemy yeah, exactly. they're talking about was and, gonna you know, be a gruesome the anti war the story, but when they made there. the cartoon like the it got such a kick ass intro song that fans that misunderstood it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're right. I, I like all the stuff they did with um that Aaron is involved with it, and how how his father passed the hey, attack Sinatra, how you doing? to him, how his father got the attack titan, etc. But all I'll of that could have been, been put on a different character instead of Aaron. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. This is you a know, delight. Uh, I love yeah, Liam. It has some cool aesthetics to it. It has some cool aesthetics. Just, you know, it's like, uh, and I'm but sure it, that, you know, people out there that I love really him, do. I just would have liked I like him. Something a bit different. I mean, At I guess it's point, part of it. This is my favorite part of AOT. Oh, whoops. Sorry, gets his armpit off. No, no. Well, then the girls dance around in the office. You know? no, oh, I just yeah. sent you the link. Oh, by the way, Rhett Line Ratten says I've only seen Remember the Titans, but he spells it Rem Rem Eb, Eber Rem, Rem Eber. I don't know. That's a funny spelling. So Rem Rem. Yeah. Rem Eber and Eber. <laughs> just... mm-hmm. I think <sighs> the the thing about writing is if you're gonna have something done to somebody else then why do you start, and I've thought about this too, like halfway through a story, or sorry, in the middle half of a story, like starting a quarter of the way in and then lasting to three quarters, having all the original cast essentially killed off as you're feeding in new characters. Um, That's what so uh, Zach did to Jawbreakers. It's totally changed it's brilliant. by the, the two-thirds mark of the book. But anyway, I like if you're going to have not Aaron be the one who becomes a Titan and re, you know reveals with with the the hand-me-down thing that comes from a a father well then why are we starting with him in the first place in the the book like why does he matter yeah so he so by issue four he'd have to turn into a title hello michael bancroft otherwise why are we reading about him are you getting packed up and ready to but i just would be more interested in a series that was about people trying to survive in the walls against monstrous things and the mystery behind them you know i don't need to see the shonen style mega fights where he turns into a titan. I don't need him to be special because of something his father pushed him. He could have just been a man growing up in the military. I would have been happy. But, you know, it would have been a very different series. But I, I, would, it's a series I would have liked to have seen. You know? See, I'd imagine a lot of all those fights would end up being a lot like like how Luke beat the Rancor. Lots of, lots of struggle, a lot of, okay, I need to find something to take him down. Um, yeah, exactly. And, you know, like getting cornered and, oh, no, we've got to wait until daytime till they slow down or stuff, a lot of isolation. Like they did with the horses. They did it with Levi and a bunch of other characters. I don't think that it would have made much difference to just drop it all together. But, I mean, then we wouldn't have been able to get to the bottom of what was going on the same way. And Liam still only has no, six. No. You got nobody is going over there to watch Liam? He's still only got six oh. people watching. It, it essentially becomes like a Kaju, uh, Kaju um, verse, verse fight. But, mm-hmm. you know, you yeah. don't get any variations. You don't get like Mothra versus mm. Godzilla, King Kong versus Godzilla. 
Oh, had some, uh, some versus had Marcus Seagorver and say hi to Graham Nolan. You know, so I guess somebody. If, went if over they're there all just here. titans with Adrian Sun says not today. No, power, it doesn't have like that appeal that has endured like the monster, giant monster kind of genre. No, it does in a way. It's just a lot more like Ultraman and stuff, I suppose. You know. Yeah. Uh, I I've got like an Ultraman game from the Super Nintendo. I still like Liam. Like he oh, makes yeah. me angry. One of, one uh, his rants about how he only wanted to save comics and all this stuff. It's like yeah, Liam is somebody who completely <laughs> like the controls are wonky. Uh, did this to himself. Like just... You know, it's frustrating to hear him blame everyone around him for his own like, failure. But take that. Hey, Sinatra, how you doing? Well, I see yeah. best ever. Thanks for having me, man. I, yeah, I think man. Like the other, Are other you excited about Super watching Nintendo Liam Gray at uh, five in the morning, six the in the morning? Is, uh, it's called you know, Shaq Fu. Honestly, not by myself. So I wouldn't. Oh, well, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, me neither. Well, I played Shaq Fu. Yeah. Yeah. Good tag team on this guy here. I, he should have kept his last channel. Uh, yeah. I still haven't gotten that one. I mean, I guess so. It doesn't really know. make I much of a difference. For the lulls, but my thing is that he does tend to... Let me turn him down a little bit. He does tend to delete his streams right after he does them. He makes videos that are like... Like just sort of impulsive and full like of the anger, and then he deletes them. I don't, I, well, I and uh, it's hard to, uh, like, there's no like yeah, clean it's, record it's of Liam's uh, Shaquille escapades, to which is too bad. To the the, uh, I don't think there is, maybe there uh, is, but not that I know of. Yeah, he came uh, back with a fresh slate, uh, uh, with total it's amnesia. <laughs> He's just carrying out like <laughs> all the time, dude, every time, and it's frustrating. It really is hard, man. He's just like, uh, he'll sit there and just kind of go off on these rants that he's just like, all these things that these people did to me, and it's like, you don't remember accusing everyone in Comicsgate of uh, having child pornography and being pedophile? You don't remember that? Like, you don't remember all of the, like, the shit that you did and said to, like, your peers in this, uh, Space. Jeez, yeah, must... Guys like testify who would give him that shit right back and not care at all. Mm. Like I never like. I was always like, I you know, I was always in private. Like Liam would sit there and go, "Hey, Ethan, this time I'm really going to take him down. I've got this shit to fucking destroy anti comic skate." And I would just listen to him and be like, "Liam." I think I think it's get back to work like to stop time. it like nobody needs you to do this like your job is to do your comics and promote other people's comics all the stuff that he says that he you know wanted wanted to do like he didn't really want to do any of that he didn't do any of that he really just got into fights with like the worst people like the royal loops you know uh the mike s miller uh he'd be angry with nasser nasser's a troll like nasser's just gonna enjoy that negative attention like liam never got that like liam wants to destroy his enemies and it's like how about if you just try ignoring them and all those folks you mentioned were the ones he freaking um, reported and got their channel freaking uh, suspended or, you know, just... Yeah, like, that was, a, that was a bridge too far. Yeah, like, when he did that, I was like, oh, man, like, now I, I can't, like... Like, I want to be on everybody's side. Like, I really want to kind of be neutral and stuff and just sort of support everyone, even when I think they're being dumb. But, like, that was really what the uh, SJWs would call toxic. When you're reporting people's channels and getting your channels taken down, like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I supposed to be on your side, man? You know, I tough. tried myself. I couldn't. Very um, I think I snapped on him one day and um, really treated him very badly. But he came back. He came back, so I don't know. He didn't, I guess I didn't. He didn't care. But he forgets. I just, I just like he wipes his I just did it to piss him off to see where he was at, see if he was actually there to, I'm, oh, yeah, you know, in goodwill, or he was there to freaking start some crap. And I, I went off on him pretty bad. I think I caught his word trash and all that stuff. Oh my god, dude! It, the Xenotype was really hard to read. I read that all the way through. It was really bad, but at the same time, like, I'm fascinated by his ideas. Like, I want to, I want to keep giving him chances. Um, but he keeps like, I'll back him, and then he'll do, he'll do something. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, if you just stop it, like, stop.
Uh, the mat uh, everything everything would get better for you, I think, you know. She's worth on a fucking he um, has his part, like that. I, it's really next level stuff. Like I said, uh, blue here, uh, the, uh, he's always he been kind of Japanese language that you can't really do with it. He didn't look at you favor favorably ever since I've been here, I think. Shit. Well, blue was uh, Samurai Zero. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Like I just see him talking yeah. shit. I'm like, what did I do to you? I think a pun should be a lot of people would He used to be a stream partner with it was him and couple other guys and he fell out yeah, just because i'm like you know just... translation and that's how... <laughs> I mean, these guys are so smart and someone... well spoken how the hell are they just I'm so sure angry remember, like, <laughs> I, don't I don't understand just... like you yeah, guys gotta be an angry person Dance? or very naive like if you're hanging out with liam i don't know like uh yeah um and like... hanging out with liam like reason, yeah like i don't know guys, like what what is the like point of it exactly Andrew like blue and naive william lion Raiden, his friends mm -hmm. like i look at them all like, kind of like with uh suspicion in my eyes like i, I see them like as the people who might about, possibly be manipulating uh, him uh whoa, and whoa, fucking with him Leaves, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know for sure. Time, it's just what I suspect because you know it seems like most like people do. None of them are holding them back. None of them are talking sense to them or like leave them guys alone or get on you. Do your job. Like do your book, man. Well, I mean, this stream is okay. It's just incredibly boring. You know, it's not. It's not selling his book. It's not really. Uh, you know, doing much. It's like when you're talking to. Uh, looks like we got eight people in there now. When you're talking to eight people on the internet. I don't even know why you're on the internet. Uh, uh, I see like these guys who uh, are running live streams and it'll be like comic book professionals from the mainstream and they're like six of them on a live stream and they're talking to two people. I'm like, you might as well just stop. Like, what are you, what are you doing this for? If you're talking to two people, why don't you take it to the telephone? Why don't you go and Skype? It's like, what is this? I'm other stuff here in my searches about the original ending is um, so funny panel discussions were the uh, same way you know chris stanley says six me and you don't count ethan oh yeah 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 i'm one of his viewers right now so late Liam's good with the Liam's great on the mic man he has like actually man, during it like the glory days he was freaking killing it man i'm telling you it, this is what's so frustrating about him so when you examine like liam gray like what is liam's potential liam's potential is infinite liam's biggest problem is liam all the time now xenotype was really badly written like it was a it was painful uh but you know what like everybody's first book is going to be a little bit rough so like i there's still some potential there i don't know when liam talks about like how he's going to help teach people how to make comics i don't know how much of that is like a weird bluff and how much of that is something that he'd be actually capable of doing because he gets on these live streams and he starts telling um, Manga Chan how to draw, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. guess what? Some of it's pretty good advice. Some sometimes he's right, you know what like, he's saying. Like they say, um, those who can't um, do teach, those who can't do teach. Yeah, maybe I. Yeah, but maybe he could do. You know, I. It's like it, like Liam. First of all, Liam suspects that everybody is out to get him, uh, and you know. I think that kind of is a reinforcing kind of point of view. Like the more you believe that, the more that's going to be true, especially on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, if like, like the thing about Liam also is that he's got a bunch of different personalities. Like he'll be a clown, uh, and then he's offended and super serious. And how dare you think he's a clown? He's just here to make comics guys. Uh, all that stuff. Uh, he'll forget what he said yesterday. He wipes the slate clean. All this stuff. I mean, these are just like his personality defects. But ultimately, when he gets on the microphone and he's talking, he's passionate. Um, when he um, all the all the woes of the world go away and he's in his zone. Yeah, like he's fun to listen to. Yep. And he's funny. You know. I mean, this. And I, I've told him that before. I'm like, you're talented, dude. Why do you do this to yourself? You're talented. Uh, he doesn't but, even do drugs. Maybe he should. Should. Maybe he should smoke <laughs> a giant. I don't know. You know, I drink, yeah. but definitely not drink. But I don't think that'll help. But. No, don't. Please don't drink. So then he's a sexual dynamo. So yeah, like there's stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> he has lots of money. He's good at sex. Like he's 
<laughs> but see, Liam being Liam being kind of corrupt is kind of funny. Like, of course he is, you know. It gives him a little color for his comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When nerds get any kind of power at all, they immediately go, like become corrupt. Like, yes, every single time. That's why I like to stay on the low and don't ask for much. <laughs> don't try to do too much. I used to kind of be, I, I wouldn't say I wasn't like that, but definitely get to, mm, I didn't like to uh, be, I didn't like to be the manager or anything like that myself, just because I knew that eventually I'm going to start treating people like shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just because of the nature of the job working at the bar, people were really freaking, ugh. Man. Sinatra, when you're on top, it's really, it, 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 like, look at what they're doing to Eric July. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's really annoying. It's That's just like, why? You gotta like, have grit, man. Yeah, like, you just go, why is everybody hating me all of a sudden? And why are they saying all this weird stuff? And why are they trying to drag me down? Like, like you I can have just ignore problem. it. Even at you my do? level, Ethan. I, well, you know, the guys I hang out with and fall out with every other freaking month or every other week. You know what I mean? It's been two or three years since I've been doing that. I think I'm at the point where I'm, I should just adjust and stay away from people who don't have anything to lose or, or, or actually working at something or working don't with people towards something. To lose. Yeah. I, I've been here long enough. Maybe my last channel squandered, you know, just because I really kind of didn't want to care. <laughs> you know, like caring too much is like, it really. It, Mm, it'll it'll take a number on my psyche if I care too much. But now I'm just at the point where like people care that I'm here. Like if I don't stream or something, like they're like, uh, "Where you at?" Eventually, like, "Dude, where you at? Are you okay?" Oh yeah, people stream. take for granted that like you're somebody who is going to be streaming first thing in the morning. Like it's like there's always somebody in Comics Gate that that's doing a live stream all throughout the day. It seems yeah. like, mm -hmm. and there's you and there's like Literature Devil in the morning. And yeah. people kind of count on that. Like, whether they, they're they going to watch you or not is, like, they just need you to be there. Because yeah, I groomed them. You know, I groomed them over the years to uh, show up and and have a good time, Ethan. It's a groomer. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny Baby no, Sauce but, says, Ethan, uh, you don't ignore your haters. Why are you talking about you engage with Vicky more than your regular fans? It's infuriating. You think I do? I mean, I, I, I call her a liar when she's lying, but... I, I feel like when somebody says, hey, I got my toy, I got my book, I'm like, thanks, awesome. Like, I engage with everyone. If anybody sends me a message, I answer it. You know, if anybody sends me, like, a tweets me something, I respond to it. And I, I you know, retweet Listen, it. Like, so. Vicky's not hanging out on your, like, uh, Tiny Baby Sloth. Uh, Ethan, I mean, Vicky's not hanging out on Ethan's channel. Like, um, the guys, I, you know, that I'm referencing, they hang out with me. I invite them. I you know, I'm generous yeah, with my most with my chairs at the at the, the table. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care who I hang out with as long as you're not guys, driving me up the wall or. Oh my god! Just now, just I don't know, man. I've been here too long, and a lot of guys aren't haven't done anything at all. Um, some of them kind of, but for the most part, if I do anything, it always seems like there's a problem. It's like, jeez, man. Well, you can't make everybody happy. I mean, Tiny Baby Sloth saying that's a lie. Well, I mean, I interacted with Vicky, uh, like yesterday. Because she said that I gave uh, a comic book cut money. And I was like, that's a goddamn lie. You know, it's like they're all coping. This weird thing happened where Doug Ernst got caught out. Yeah. Doug Ernst got caught. Okay. He's part of Iconic Comics. And we've been saying over and over again that what Iconic Comics does is kind of weaponize their fans. They, they pretend to be squeaky clean. And oh, we're above the drama and stuff like this, and we're, and meanwhile, all they do is compare themselves to Cyber Frog. They're really concerned about like Cyber Frog and oh, Ethan's jealous of Iconic. I don't even think about these guys, but what they do is they send their fans after me all the time, uh, and and like you wonder like why why is this happening? Well, they're doing it. Like they're telling their fans to do it. So that's that's been a theory that's been unprovable until. Doug Ernst got caught. Comic Book Hut wanted a little promotion for his terrible comic book. Yeah, he, like he he's like why space are whale abortion book? Yeah, he's got a like a space whale book, and it was really bad. And clearly, like and, you know, everybody is doing comics. Not everybody should be, and that's my theory. But anyway, he he was he was angry that like Doug Ernst and Tim Lim weren't promoting his comic, uh, and. 
so he he just kind of came forward and spilled all this. He's like, like why would you, why would you think Doug Ernst would promote your comic? Well, he'd promote my comic because I've been doing his dirty work for the past two years. He's been sending me videos that he's made. He's been sending me video titles and all this stuff to go and attack you while I have to praise iconic comics and Common America and all this shit. And it's like uh, he he showed proof for that. Well. That was unbelievable. That was just, I mean, I, it's like, I kind of knew it was happening, but to actually see it was like, holy shit, like Doug Ernst is a real piece of shit. Well, um, by the way, the first thing that happened is Tim Lim rushed to, to Twitter to be like, to sort of do damage control. Remember that? And it's like, so you're involved too, asshole. Like if it were just he Doug Ernst, himself, huh? yeah, it's like if it were just Doug Ernst doing this and he got caught, you'd just be like, well, whatever. What does that have to do with me? But it's like to be out there and be like, we here at Iconic Comics. What the fuck are you doing, man? You're doing it too. Yeah. He's so, worse. so these guys like Vicky and uh, you know uh, that whole crew, like uh, they've been like doing their best to sort of gaslight and rewrite history about that and just be like Doug wasn't he didn't get caught there was no evidence there was uh, yeah, there was we saw it uh, oh uh, freaking line. comic book hut freaking uh skewed his guts all over the freaking all over your show like yo you said man of course yeah he oh. like he revealed it all like everybody was oh, there so, he lied. We saw it. so comic right. book hut lied then that's what you're saying sure well, the reason why he, you know, there. So the other thing was, I guess, like Doug Ernst gave him a thousand dollars. Like his grandmom died or something. His mother died. She he needed funeral money. So Doug, good guy Doug Ernst gives him money. Now, who does that? You know what I mean? Like, who? Like somebody who like. So you won't even promote his comic book. So if you're like, well, he's my friend or he's just a guy. So he's such a good friend that you won't promote his comic book, but you'll give him a thousand dollars cash for his grandmother's funeral. That much before, far, that was like a year before or so before that though, right? I don't know. I don't know the don't timing of that, but it's just peculiar that it's like, like, you know, I'm not giving someone a thousand dollars cash. I, if I, if the answer is like what they really need is me to promote their comic book a little bit, make them a little money. Like I, I do that before I gave somebody that, you know, is not related to me in any way cash on that level to bury their, their mother or grandmother. It's just very odd. So it's clear that this money was kind of like an under the table kind of thank you, like sort of thanks for what you're doing. Uh, pretty sure. Anyway, that's the whole thing. So Vicky comes out yesterday and she's like, Ethan gave comic book hut money too. No, I did not. I never did. Uh, and I, so I denied it. And then she said, but you backed his campaign for the whale book. First of all, if I did like, that's not the same thing as giving him money like that way. Like that's me. Like, obviously I would have been, well, yeah, I would have been buying this book to make shit. You guys can make fun rip through the pages or rip off. Right. I would have been, I would have, I would have had the book to make fun of it on a live stream because comic book cuts somebody who gives me hell. So I would have been like, yeah, well, it's book shit. But in fact, I didn't back his comic. So that's a lie. That was just a lie. It's not like I one wouldn't guy. have. I just didn't. Who had like the 2D really like just squared up panels, like perspective. And like, who was that? Like, Ant Car not Ant Car was, or like, what was that guy's name uh, on the internet a long time ago? And he came out with like this really crappy freaking book um you were looking at it on your stream this is like so much so long ago what was that guy's name chat uh i want to say ankara linkara linkara yeah yeah linkara what about him that was funny <laughs> what, what, what about him i don't, I don't oh know. no the book you're uh the book you, you reviewed of uh, his, right yeah yeah, 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 that's yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying. just like you were speaking about you know comic books huh? you know you would have uh, done the same thing yeah sure yeah mm -hmm some degree um but i don't know anyway uh, he's a, um, but not a friend not somebody that uh you know i would give money to out of uh, kindness no, not at all who else is left out of like the, the cg detractors or whatever who's really left nope i mean they're all freaking sucking their thumbs i don't know i got vicky shit yeah it's mostly Vicky these days. And like Discord people, but that's it. I mean, nobody really gets on streams anymore. 
Oh, there's Big Daddy. I haven't seen him in a minute. You know, oh, there's this other guy, uh, Mersh, who does Nightwave Radio. Just a t tangential uh, statement. I don't know where his channel went. I think he got taken down. He was a comedian. Did he really? That, Did his channel yeah. get taken down? I think so. I couldn't find it. I was like, no, I haven't seen Nightwave in a while. Just for some reason, I just, I think I seen a video that said, I'm like, what happened to that guy? Because I haven't seen him in weeks. And I guess he probably got taken down. I'm not, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. I like that guy. Yeah. Like, by the way, I'm, I've been watching nothing but like uh, Revenge of the Sis videos. Like I just watch clips of Revenge of the Sis, sure. and I absolutely love Revenge of the Sis, Mersh and uh, Royce. And I, I mentioned that, and I got all these people telling me the fuck is the matter with you. <laughs> like yeah, you're not supposed you? to like those guys. <laughs> That's why we like because you're not supposed to. I don't like. I don't know. Like you know, people like this. You don't. You definitely don't like those guys. That guy's an asshole. I'm like, well, how come I'm watching him and he's funny? Uh, I don't understand, like, what the hell? Well, eight this hours internet ago. shit. He was on Twitter eight hours ago with a, uh, I don't know what to speak to him. But. Yeah, how you run into him? How did you, uh, how were you introduced to Mersh? I just, I saw a Revenge of the Sis clip oh, okay. about a topic that I was interested in. And uh, so I watched it and I was like, boy, I really enjoyed that. Those guys have, have a good rapport and the jokes yeah. were pretty snappy and like, and sharp. And so I just started watching them. And got into their whole world. I found out about, uh, you know, the stand-up comics. Like, I don't, I don't watch stand-up comedy, but like, there's this whole like subculture of stand-up comedians. They're uh, underground too. Everybody's freaking underground now because we can't say what we want to say and do what we want to do without people, you know, with the woke shit. Here's Liam with some puppies here. What's he doing? <laughs> Liam shaved his face. Works. I don't know if I like it. Yeah. Get that beard uh, back. They look pretty cute. They're so strong. They're like two weeks old. They shouldn't <laughs> even be this. They're like, they're way too big and strong for that. Like, oh, these are the crikey! Look at these buttes. <laughs> yeah, look at them. Get a hold of them. Here we go. Look at them. How you doing? This is the one. Uh, this is the one I think that we'll be keeping. This little girl here. But. You're Chuck barking. Up, they're the ones that yeah, can get I, I'm top dog. I'm yeah, you gotta dead. have that beard back, Liam. Yeah. So you got Oz Great Sage. Are they still nursing? Now hold on a second. Yeah. Is Oz Great Sage that's my the homie. same as? Is no, that that's Oz? Not, no, that's Oz. No, two different people. Oh. No, he's a good dude. Oz Great Sage is a, a a sage. He's a good man. Oh, okay. I don't know the difference Oz between him and Oz. Yeah, I thought he was the same guy. I think they're both. Yeah, they're both Aussie. They're both um, Australian. Sure. Okay. And then <laughs> Samba Go Go. Who I think used he's to be OG. on my channel. He was in your chat. Uh, yeah, he's supposed to ask about your chat. I saw him the other day. And then... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and they're eating me. Oh, God. Ooh, okay, I'm one. glad Liam put okay. his studio back it's together like, again with his uh, yeah, Castle Grey Skull, the Muppet to Show. You, but we're what people are coming to see. Whatever happens you're, to that show. just the co-host. That's fine. Uh, Liam is yeah. saying things like, if you listen to him lately, he's saying, like, I had to move because I was being threatened by people. And oh, the implication God. is it was Comics Gate. He talks about like uh, people flying drones over his house uh, <laughs> and spying on him. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know if Liam is like deliberately lying or, you know, what? Living like, out some fantasy action movie in his head. Yeah, because what he's talking about is, you know, Google Earth, um, you know, Google Maps. Like, so once people find your address on uh, Kiwi Farms, you get doxxed on Kiwi Farms, which happens. I mean, I was. Exclusively on Kiwi Farms. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, once that happens to you on Kiwi Farms, especially, what they do is they take a picture, they go to Google Maps, and they get your house. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for it isn't to spy on you. It's to sort of display the circumstances of your living. So it's like... <sighs> Your address is, uh, you know, whatever it is. And then they go to Google Maps and they have an overhead view of your neighborhood. And then they'll look at your house from a street view and all the stuff that the Internet lets you do. And it's mostly just to say, look at his house. Like either it's a nice house or it's a rambler piece of shit, whatever, a trailer. Uh, you know, that's all it is. And Liam thinks, like, does he think or does he, is he just fucking around? Like he thinks those are drone photos 
that like comics gate is flying over his house to spy on him <laughs> somebody showed him google earth that he thought it was a fucking still shot from a drone fuck yeah like like that's what he's saying and i just want to tell him like i want to be like you know that's google maps like it's not like nobody's flying drones over your house but part of me thinks he knows that and it doesn't like he like it's his story you know he's sticking to it mm -hmm. um it's more interesting if there are people flying drones over his house so he says he was forced to move into a new house in order to hide from the stalkers but my question is like uh dude you're still like you're not effectively hiding you're still on the internet you're still doing these uh, live streams you know uh, people are, are pretty much going to find you wherever you are is that really why you moved you you like, imagine I, being like i was doxxed so i'm going to sell my house pack up my family find a new house get a mortgage he doesn't even work does he work does he even have a job I don't know. I, I don't know they anything about him. Ran out of resources. I don't ran out of money or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's unsustainable. I don't know how you own a whole. He's probably. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Grant disability. Uh, I don't know. I I literally don't know. That could be the answer. That could be the key to the whole thing. <laughs> could be the key to the whole pathology of him. I'm Jeez. fascinated by him though. I do, like. I don't know what's true and what isn't true. Like right. when he walked into the liquor store and upside down that, that, that bottle of vodka. Fuck. Yeah, but like he has never said that's fake, and like, like seriously, that's. The thing is, you can't. As far as I know, you can't do that in a liquor store. That's literally like the owner could get a fine for that, or probably get their license taken away. I mean, if they want to, you know, depends on circumstance. Yeah. Like you can't do that. I don't know about even Australia. They're worse than uh. They got to be worse with the laws um than America. You can't do that. You can't bring in, especially you can't bring in liquor containers or bottles into a um into a pub, or into a bar, you know what I mean? Like, where, where they serve drinks, you can't do that either. Well, uh, the law's different in Australia, though. Uh, well, I, get, I don't I don't think they're cracking liquor in the middle of the store once they open it or something, or at the counter pouring shots. I don't know if that's how, I don't know. I don't see that happening, but, man. Yeah, I, but, I mean, this is just, all this is meant to say, like, I don't know what's true about Liam and what isn't true. He's a joker. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. All right, so they're telling him that I'm mouth, streaming. Looking at me, and I'm like, oh. you mumble. So I grabbed that yeah, off. Yeah, that him. Bud Light girl. He <laughs> threw it away. Sniping. I was like, where the hell did he get that? I, I'm thinking he's found it in L's room. I'm just glad he, he didn't eat it. The you know, he was smart enough to wow. just be trotting around. I didn't know that. Like you can't do that here. You'd, but, be, um, you'd be down a dog. Yeah. No, I have to get him. Get him so you can actually drink a bottle at the liquor store. Wow. Yeah, shut but well, you can't do that in New Jersey, I'll tell you that. Can't do that in New York. Are they bored of you? Um, no, I've got all my. I don't think I ever thought about it. I never thought about it. Bed, I think, which is good. Well, let me just go check on them. You guys talk amongst yourselves. I mean, so all I want Liam to do so really is just make some that's comics that's sweet. and have fun. But yeah, they've been licking my beard, beard and licking my face. And grow back that fucking beard, dude. Like Liam, here's the thing, pal. You and me. You guys talk. I'll be back in a minute. You know, we can't do that. We can't go barefaced anymore, man. I want to shave my face, but then, yeah, I feel the same way. Even if it's gray and pepper it up, I can't yeah. get to oh, no, shave enough. No. At least I'm my, uh, no, I just can't. I can't do it. No, I mean, well, you know, look, if you have, like, a chubby face, I mean, I don't even know. Like, I have not shaved, I have not gone barefaced for, like, <clears> since 2014 or something, so. I don't even know the state of my face. I don't know what it looks like <laughs> under there. God only knows. Well. Yeah, I just keep the beard there and it's fine. You know. So it's actually knows. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bob Bug is with One Eyes King is like I'm I'm sleep sniping you. So now we got some people in the chat, nine people watching over there, uh, and letting uh, them know. Find out why Blue Samurai Zero hates me and what his problem is. What did I do to him? Years ago, man, I didn't do anything to these people. I, a lot of this stuff is just in their heads. I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, you don't got to convince me. <laughs> what did I, I do? I don't care either way. I don't. I'm not saying you did it. I'm just saying I don't give a fuck. What? Everybody's angry. Why? Why are they angry? No, no. It's fucking. Much out of the I don't know. They're not cool. <laughs> They're not cool for school. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not sure. But he needs to relax. I'm angry. Just because, like, I don't look at other people and get angry. I look at myself and get angry. <laughs> that's the difference. Like, I'm always angry, but that's just because I, I freaking trying to, like, get better myself. And there's many challenges I have to deal with. Um, but, you know, even myself, I could be my own enemy. But that's the part where I got to, you know, fight with myself and give myself the right advice and not fall into the uh, self-limiting beliefs and loser behavior shit. And that's kind of what I'm seeing around. I'm like, man, I got to stop dealing with some of these people. This shit's going to bring me down because I let it. I'm like, I'm not going to have that. got to stick around, Ethan. Uh, I've been around this one. Let me see here. We got Lord Raptor Jesus who says, uh, for your information, Vicky claims to have bought 45 CG books. Where did she buy them from? Oh, I don't think she backed anybody. Yeah. She probably just bought a big stash of CG books from some. Wow. Really There's people out there who got like thousands upon thousands of dollars in CG books, and you know, yeah. I mean, man, you can buy a car with the money. Of these people, you can buy a brand new freaking awesome car for the money. Jimmy Max says, uh, "EVS, did Choke Out download that show for you yet?" Uh, no, are you talking about, hopefully you're talking about the, uh, the show that Ava wanted, that dog show. Sure, I don't Paw understand. Patrol? It's not Paw Patrol, uh, cause that's here in the United States. The UK uh, has a show called, uh, Dog Squad. And I don't know what it is, it's like rescue dogs. And Ava found clips from it on YouTube and she's just like, Daddy, I want Dog Squad. I'm like, I, I I'm trying. I'll ask if we have some friends in the UK. She's like, yes, do we have friends in Britain? She calls it Britain. She's like learning from the from the iPad. So uh, I said, I'll ask. And uh, But you can't get it. Like, you know, everybody's saying get a VPN. I don't even know what that is. Use a VPN. It, it reroutes your uh, internet to like another country. It, it, it makes your location anonymous. Like you could pick a country or you could pick a different state or something and um when people ping you or try to get your ip address it'll give you a different the ip address from a different that country really or whatever seems like it's not hard know. it's not hard it's just like Can one I do it on shirt. an ipad i mean yeah they'll give you a if you get like um if you get one of those ones that these guys show you got to be careful man i don't know ask somebody who knows like because some of them are freaking still like data miners um some of them are legit i'm not even gonna bother uh so much so said it's too oh, hard Says that Ethan can't figure out Adblock. You think he's going to change his IP? Now listen here. I I did figure out Adblock. So the thing when Congress or whoever the lawmakers were talking about banning v, VPNs, those things are real. Like they work. You know what I mean? And they're not hard, Ethan. It's super freaking like one button type of shit, dude. And your phone, and probably two other devices you could use. They'll, they'll have some package like that, so you can have a VPN on your phone. And so, like, if you have if you connect to internet somewhere else on an open location, nobody could get your actual IP because you're running it. And so, it might take you. I mean, it's pretty fast now, but ten years ago, it'll probably take you five second lag. You know what I mean? You'll have some lag on it because it's got to go through another country and come back and give you the information. You know what I mean? Right. So I mean, it's really not. It's, it's worth it, actually. Mm. Well, I mean, I'll look at it. It says it, it protect your uh, your your personal information and all that stuff. Uh, EVS with a VPN is like a chimp with a machine gun. Says Adrian Stone. He should know. Like this is a guy who that, was talked me through how to do stuff. To be fair, that chimp did not shoot any of those freaking guys on that video. Mm. I thought it had a pretty good um, discipline. It's going to not be a lunatic. I yeah, NordVPN, and there's another one that the quartering no, not really, there's a lot of um, used to promote. Yeah. You don't but it's, I don't know, 8 bucks, 10 bucks a month. I don't know. Samba Go goes in their chat. Like, yeah. This guy hates me, and I don't get it. Like, all, everyone in here should be on my side. I don't understand. He says, ship my eyes of March and Sal Android. That's the thing already, Pie Man. Dude, I'm trying my best. Every day I ask for updates. And they go, we're almost there. Every day. I pass along updates as I have them. Do my very, very best. What's up, Ethelan? And it, they better hurry up with the Sal Android books because uh, 
the UPS is about to go on strike. I saw you were, I heard you were talking about that on Shane's channel. Um, have they already? Nope. Uh, the 31st is when we'll find out. They got to come to accord, basically, with the Teamsters. Uh, or else, uh, yeah, UP UPS is going to go on strike. That's going to be a nightmare. You have no you have, um, the Store shelves will be empty. It's going to be crazy. Do you have um, Walgreens store chain around here? Yeah. Uh, what? Walgreens is a store, like a pharmacy yeah. store. Yeah, sure. BP, um, BP, oh, freaking, I got FedEx delivers packages there, like as a default. Like you could you could choose the location where you get sent and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that or like they'll send it out for you too. I don't know. Um, well, we're FedEx. using UPS to ship out most of the packages to people right now. I mean, UPS has a great kind of uh, crossover thing with USPS, which is cool. you know just like UPS will ship to your local. Uh, uh, post office and then the post office delivers the package and it's really inexpensive and high quality like a good service um so we've been using that almost exclusively but if ups goes on strike we're gonna have to go to fedex at dhl shipping is already really expensive uh for us it's just really expensive we're gonna have to go to there and do it without complaining we're not gonna complain even once anyway you know my vote dude good luck man okay yeah, that's the way it goes good luck Hope they don't. Yeah. Fun gets figured out. We got to get Liam on my show. I'll get Liam over here. <laughs> Somebody go over to Liam's chat and say, uh, Ethan would like to send you the link to join him on his stream. <laughs> See if he does it. And the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, like Liam will occasionally be like, I just want you to leave me the fuck alone. I'm like, okay, cool. And then yesterday he sends me an email. And then he'll send me these emails that are just like, uh, I want to talk. And it's like, what do you want me to do? Leave you alone or do you want me to rescue you from yourself? Like, what's what? Don't do that. Don't do well, that. Well, like, look, a Liam redemption, redemption arc would be fun. It happened for Nasser. It happened for JDA. It happened with all the people that Liam hates. And see, that's the problem. Uh, Liam's biggest problem is he doesn't want to coexist with people he dislikes. Hey, guess what? It's called Planet Earth, dude. You know, you, I, I dislike almost everybody on Planet Earth except for Comicsgate. Have to coexist. Can't do much about it. Eight Man is sitting there saying, join EVS, Liam. Uh, he's inviting you. Thank you, Eight Man. Thanks, Perf Comics. I thought that video was for me. I thought the link was for me. Uh, oh, what is this? Uh, Bob, like, could you... Oh, it is. You did send it to me. Wait. That's a link. Well, I don't know if it's going to work, though, because... Uh... And Quinn says Liam is unsufferable. I don't think he is. Sometimes he can be. Oh, it's the um, dog squash thing, which I think. Yeah, but I don't know if it's going to work, though. And so, like, my head's full of stuff. So you go, like, Attack on Titan, and I'm like, oh, Because you have to be I, in the UK to watch it. That's why you need a VPN, because you can switch your um your, your IP address to somewhere in Britain, and then you could watch it. You could do that with Netflix. You could do that with anything, uh, Hulu. Yeah, that's why you need a VPN, because right now that would not be a problem. And you would you would be um, quick to learn it, because you have a reason now. It's not that hard, dude. Luffy is God says EVS wants to trigger Liam, instigate it. No, I don't want to trigger Liam. Jesus, God Almighty. Everybody has, like, listen, I'm not your normal guy that's on the internet, okay? I'm just not. I'm not that dude. I'm different. All the people that you see on the internet, uh, a world of lol cows and uh, kiwi farmers, I enjoy all of that, but that's not who I am. Yeah, sorry. I, my uh, my thing with Liam would be just to straighten him out, get him back to uh, work, put him on the show, support his uh, one not Wonder Island, the uh, Dino King I'd support. I haven't. I bought a PDF. I, I never got that. I don't think I have. But um, and I'm sort of not accustomed to it. Sort of not, yeah. Sort of weird. Like I've trained my brain. To like I mean, I would support kind of Dino King. I actually legitimately thought Dino King looked look pretty good Dino from what I can see. say. I just wanted to see what he did. That was gonna buy Xenotype. That was. Two. That's uh. 
That's not my thing. Cool art. I just. Yeah. Turn it up a little bit. All right, hold on. Yeah, he's like ignoring. Well, uh, I'm guaranteed like, being. E I'm guaranteed being efapped by people right now. You are. Uh, You're being efapped by me, Liam. Not, like, not by everybody. No, by me. They have no content of their own. So I don't I have, have, have zero own. content. Yeah. I was great. Well, so says Ervin Smith was a great character, though. Yes, he was. Intriguing at times. Everything's a nightmare all the time. Yeah. Anyway, to be okay, fair, man, I mean, you said you gotta go. Let's not let's not keep you prisoner here by distracting yeah. you. Yeah, no, it's fine. I want to figure out who's Ethan. Not really paying attention. Yeah, yeah not does it matter? It. Not worth it. No. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! I gotta switch my fucking thing. I suppose not. Can I be mean? Can I be bad, Ethan? What? Yeah. Do what? Put like a testify thing on there. No, don't do that. Okay. Don't freak him out. I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I'm not trying to. I don't have an ulterior yeah. motive. Yeah, probably. Okay. I would like to speak to you. Why is EVS stream sniping me? All right, Liam, come Good check night, out my ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh he got God's sake! Oh, oh he's no, an obsessed yeah. stalker. Uh, Liam, tell them that uh, you emailed does he, does me. Does he still do that? Like, um, I call it the Liam emailed me, goes, basically asshole. asking for like, help. Like, dude, his voice breaks every time he says "asshole." <laughs> I don't know. Come what on, anyway, thanks so much for the info. This is Liam, like, why this don't is you like listen most to not you, the other guy. stream I've done in ages. Why? No, he's one of them Jersey you. guys that breaks Thank you for you had me, voice, you had me you come on asshole. to make it more interesting, and I made yeah. it less interesting. You blew, blue so, Samurai Zero, work, you had no idea how boring you were. You were really boring. I made it perfect in the other direction. Just come on over here, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am going to go lay down and rest the brain. Yeah. And I'm gonna be uh, tormented by 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 what is it? By Dabu to nice. guys. I'm gonna just cry myself to sleep. You know. Well, he's tormenting you. God man. Almighty! So, it's impossible. You know. you know what I mean? Like it's because okay. Of just come to terms. What? Just come to terms. Yeah. Yeah. Lorenzo streamed uh, yesterday. At a yeah, that was. Something. Yeah, but anyway, no. Look, it's all good. I I was wrapping this up Nobody's anyway. What I might do? You like that, Liam? I might treat myself to this old Jungle Book movie that I've been wanting to watch for a while. That Maybe looks horrible, like dude. This is from like the nineteen, where is this? Nineteen twenties. Thank you, Oz, Great Sage. Nineteen forty-two. Yeah, look at that. That's that. That's that's what a sophisticated yeah. nerd I am. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for coming. Uh, if you haven't, check out uh, Wonder Island on Indiegogo. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Dolls, sit there, like this is the thing. Like, what are you gonna do? Done. It's fully gone. We just the dude send sends me There's emails. Only Forty-nine copies of the first looking for my help. After that, they're sold out. Uh, so grab and them. Does like, not get trust a me at all. Cool not at all. Up to him. Shelf right now. But uh. Yeah, be well, stay excellent to one another, and uh, I'll I catch think you guys tune into this show. next time. This is what he's going to do. Good day. I don't follow him anymore. I don't. I just got tired because his he got too extreme with it. And so I'm, just, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and you're not gonna abuse my emotions. Right? I'm not gonna watch you abuse your own emotions. I'm not gonna be a part of this at all. And I don't want. I'm just going to stay away. Yeah, you leave, you leave you. I'm not even messing with you over here. Liam's been invited on my channel plenty of times, um, even when he was like the worst person. Just to figure him, just, just try to talk him down a little bit, figure out what, but he always he always kicks back. He always yeah, bucks back. He don't care. He's indignant. And that's Man, right. Look, the thing about it is, is that there's been a lot of reconciliation around here. And, uh, you know, Comics Gate does need to sort of, uh, get rid of some of its old demons people do need to just kind of get along i mean ultimately okay so everybody has tried uh, a lot of people have tried to kind of walk away from this and see how they've done on their own and it hasn't gone well and it just hasn't gone well the, the the idea of being independent every single person who's walked away from comics gate has had to attach themselves to some larger entity in order to stay afloat every single one that's true of me so, point, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, the, the thing that Comics Gate at least offers you is uh, independence. Uh, you know, you can oh, uh, you can run your own business and, and be your own guy and, and kind of be successful. But, uh, yeah, like at some point, you know, it's like I, I get it, man. So many people like who are in this space have broken hearts and they're just all like kind of 
you know, fucked up. I, I don't blame him. I do too. I, I have a broken heart too. I, you know, don't trust people. I That's shouldn't why you're trust an people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like, look, you know, comics do break your heart. That is true. Well, I mean, but musicians, enough already. actors, all that stuff. I mean, uh, artists are just broken, broken people, broken hearts, you know, trying to put the pieces together in beautiful ways, you know. So, how do we bring out businessmen in comic? artists who have broken hearts how do we make them become business people who see the 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 greater good and actually kind of uh the the advantages of being part of a larger thing a larger club um because again it is not going well for them it, it just isn't going well i'm looking at what's going on with liam it's not attitude. going well it's all about attitude ethan it's all about attitude and that's just that's not even here it's everywhere you have yeah. to have the right attitude Samba Gogo says, reconcile with the dirt worm. And see, the thing about that is, like, that was all his doing. I, you know, he would still be here if he wanted to be here. It's not me who got rid of him. He kind of said, thanks for the money. I'm not going to be using the hashtag anymore. See you later. And he just wanted to get the hell away. And we we're like, no, hold on a second. You can't just run away like that. Like, at least it makes sense. Like, what are you talking about? Dirtworm left on his own, so there's no reason to reconcile with him. I feel like uh, he used Comics Gate. That was like eight hundred thousand dollars, wasn't it? I don't know how much it was, but he he definitely used this community, took took money from it, and then just kind of, uh, you know, wouldn't help us. I mean, in return for which, I think people would want somebody like uh, Doug Tenable to just be like, "Yeah, man, Comics Gate," uh, but no, like he took money and then he left. It's like fuck. The fuck was that? So that's Tenable. Um, it's a whole different situation. Um, I think Liam is different. If you remember that, remember that war campaign stream of like the, um, funeral of CG or whatever, what, remember that shit? And like everybody that showed up on that panel is literally untrustworthy. Every single one of them. Uh, here's the uh, Oz great sage. He came over to us. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. Send Oz the link too. He's one hundred percent. Can we get him in here? I want to talk to Oz. Great stage. Oh, it's Oz. Great stage. No, he doesn't get on streams. Oh, he doesn't. No, I could. I don't know. No, he's a good mm -hmm. dude. One hundred percent. We tried to get um Oz. We tried to get Liam on here. You know me. I'm a naughty boy, but Ethan's kind of just like, hey, I haven't seen. Like he said, why don't you just leave me alone? And we have left him alone, and then we start. You know. You the showed thing, up again and no the thing about liam is that he says yeah like i want to be left alone it's like okay so we'll leave you alone you and then he's off. he sends me messages ah, and he tough. sends me messages and the messages are of a of a nature of like uh i can't believe like what's he saying you can you, uh, i can't believe that you made the choices like picking nasser over me at the end of the day or some shit right oh yeah yeah oh he sent me a message that said this is fucked this was just uh two days ago uh, he says, uh, oh, he sends me over uh, Sheila aliens, uh, like AIing my voice. Uh, and you know, yeah, I know she, Sheila aliens is a troll. Like she wants to, you know, AI my voice and make me say embarrassing things. It's that's how she is. She can do whatever she wants. <laughs> See, the difference between like me and other people is that like, I'm, I'm go ahead and do that. Like, I don't care. It's the internet. Have fun. I got jealous because when she did it with me, the, the AI Finatra sounded like a what I should sound like. <laughs> How I should speak. <laughs> Spoke too well. Yeah. And then the chat was making fun of me, um, saying that AI Finatra, the AI Finatra is a man way better than me. Yeah, like, by the way, like, uh, I still don't think any, like, the AI has gotten my voice down. I, I have not heard anybody be able to really imitate me. Uh, the closest thing is... Um, What's his name? The guy that does rap? Oh, uh, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Yeah, he, he did pretty wild, good. Though. Like, I, I sent, uh, I, I played some of that for Andrew. I said, does that sound like me? She's like, yeah, it's not bad. You know, but, uh, close. yeah. Kind of close. But I don't think Sheila's AI has You have a lot of quite. inflections up and downs. You have, it, I think a lot of what you're saying is off the cuff, and um, there's no, like, you have a lot of emotion when you speak, so um, 
it does fluctuate a lot and that's very difficult to duplicate emulate samba gogo says the ai finatra sounded vaguely smart so we knew it was fake samba gogo yeah, exactly what you, samba gogo what are you doing with liam are you in there making fun of him like are you like sincere when you're hanging out with him like i i don't understand like i see some people that are that are in there and i feel like you guys are giving them terrible terrible advice uh, and uh, he counts on you for support and stuff. I think he feels sort of uh, validated by you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I think it just sucks. Like, to me, like, you know, I would just tell him, no, man, go back with the group. You know, that's where the audience is. That's where the money is. That's where the audience is. So you need to be a part of that group. And, like, you don't have to hang out. Like, like a lot of people don't like Matt Barr, so they don't hang out with Matt Barr. But Matt Barr's comics gay and their comics gay, and I don't take any sides. Matt Barr is cool. I, I actually like Matt Barr, but Matt I mean, Barr a lot of my me, friends don't. <laughs> what? Like, no, Matt Barr. Yeah, he likes me too. Yeah. Yeah, so like I mean, uh, Matt Barr. He's gonna send me the link to hang out on a freaking Call of Duty. I'm like, I don't even play that shit. Oz says, uh, I, "We talk anime. I don't give advice." Samba says, "I'm sincere." Yes. Okay. I just feel like, uh, yeah, Matt is funny. I think, I don't want to speak for you, but what you said earlier is that some people around, he, you feel like some people around him aren't giving him the right, aren't, are really just there to gas him up and make him watch Make him, him continue fail. going, like running yeah. into walls over and yes. over again. Yeah. So that's what he's probably trying to figure out, but... Um, I tell him I all the time, but he's, he's great. Asbury Sage is a good dude. He, like, here's the thing. Like, Liam has done some fucked up stuff to me. I mean, he really has. Remember when he gave that lecture? Like, the, the like when when they finally come to you, Ethan Vance, Scott, that it's gonna be the mainstream media that takes you down. Uh, saying all this weird shit, like he, <laughs> I remember, I remember a lot of weird was, lies. Remember you telling the story that um, um, Andrea told you to stop saying uh. Ethan Van fucking Skyva. You're just like you're talking about how you're just walking around yeah. the house saying that yeah. shit. <laughs> I can see it. Fucking Van Skyva. Yeah, Fakin like. With a a. <laughs> fucking. Yeah, reason, like it's funny. Like somebody on Kiwi Farm spelled it out phonetically. Like Ethan Fakin Fan with an F. Fan Skyva. Let's do that. And it is so uh, fun to say that Ethan yeah. fucking fan scoy uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go. RSB says, shut up, Ethan. By the way, RSB has like a hand, that, like a smacking hand for an avatar. So ah. like that's when that when uh, RSB tells me to shut up, I'm like, what? I feel like he's trying to smack me. I don't like, like that. Java energy right there. I don't know this person. I've never seen him before, but I've seen him. He's all right, awesome. you know, but he's usually yeah, telling like me to him. shut up. Uh, bar is kind of a spark at times. Yeah, I mean, I see that. Like, he'll go in and fight people. And by the way, when he's fighting people that I don't like, it's it's like, That's see, this great. is the thing with War Campaign. Like, War Campaign, first of all, would be like, Hail Caesar, we love you, and stuff like that. Of course, obviously, that was great. Uh, and they would. it was fun when they were fighting people that I didn't like. Because I'm an imperfect man, okay? I, I'm not perfect. I. It'd be great if I were just like, uh, you know... Please stop picking on Renfamous. Please stop going after, you know, Smiller. Yeah, I mean, there's a, bunch, there's a few but people that are on the same it's page. Fun. And you don't have to, you know, keep people in line at least if they're not fighting yeah. them. Like, hey, you guys are kind of screwing up over here. What's going on? Yeah, like, Matt. when Matt goes after Vicky, it's great. When Matt goes after Cecil, see, it's the same thing with War Campaign. I'm like, knock it off, dude. You know, stop going after Cecil. What's going on with you and Anna? Uh, yeah, so that's dude. the way it is. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't like people attacking my friends, but I guess I like it when people attack my enemies. It's about retarded shit that people do in CG. Um, I didn't know that he hated Anna, and it was in my ignorance. I asked him for a... Remember when I did her uh, songs or whatever? I wanted, like, an album cover, a cool album cover, and I thought he could do it real quick. And he freaking... Wait, who? Matt? Matt <laughs> I, I, This is, like, last year. Like, I freaking went up. This is like a year and a half ago. It's hilarious. I didn't even know he freaking hated her. I'm like, oh, shit. I just asked him if he could draw a cover of her for oh me. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, like, I don't know who hates who completely. I know I, me either. Yeah, I it's know, like, man. it's always a surprise. I really. Except when I'm on streaming. I, you know, I keep everything on the up and up. 
everybody knows everything about me because it's all live. You know what I mean? I don't talk to people in DMs like that. Very short sharing links or that's pretty much it. I don't yeah, really a lot of people, people. There, there are a lot of like discords and a lot of private rooms and everything. You know what that ends up doing is it just makes people like suspicious of each other. Like, you know, everybody's got an ulterior motive and there's a lot of bullshit going on, like whisper network shit. Um, I liked it because I could be at work and I hear just a bunch of people bullshitting or fighting. Smug Pug's Discord was fun for that. I tell you, as shitty as it got sometimes, man, I'll just be at work and listen to TJ and Risey and Morg and all these other, and Vicky and freaking everybody just yelling at each other. It was amazing. I was like, this is great. And um, nobody invites me to their Discord. And I just feel like nobody likes me. He said, nobody likes me. So thank you for having me on your channel. Yeah, you, because I don't think anybody trusts me. Freaking. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, uh, no, like John outside. John Mellon of, has you on all the time. Oh, um, no, like, because uh, I don't like the people who do the drama. I don't think they want me around because they know I'll fight. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I think they don't even, like, same thing as Matt Barr, like, eventually like people aren't you know they're gonna stop inviting like nobody invited me ever because i don't ask either i don't play that fucking shit i don't play the let me hang out with you guys um i'm gonna hang out with you if i want to i'm gonna uh, look, you know all right i don't see. ask people. all of liam's friends are in here now we got osgrade sage who is no fan of mine and i wish he, he was he is he is stop he it isn't. He, didn't he refund all my stuff or something i, I swear mean, i will i don't know how i could tell you and i saw oz I like on liam's show i think somebody sent me a link to like uh liam going off like he got cash grab and i i watched this and they're like he talks about you here so this is the thing by the way if you talk about someone on the internet like probably they're gonna see it so like somebody's gonna send them a link so if anybody's talking about me usually unless it's like the royal loop brothers or vicky i don't listen to them i just fuck it they're all it's all bullshit why why give myself aggravation but if liam's talking or about me then i'll probably go and watch it uh so yeah like liam's just sitting there and like you know it's like talking about how um the lateness of comicscape books like ruined everything it ruined him and all this stuff and i'm like Man, I gotta say, like, here's the thing. If Cyberfrog 2 being late ruined your business, you never had a business. Like, you're, you're, that's the whole thing. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Cyber, it, it, Cyberfrog 2 is its own thing. And if, like, my spillover helped you and then my angry customers hurts you, then really be thankful that you have my customers at all because they're my customers essentially you know for ethan no i'm trying to freaking help out the whole situation because at this point um it's if i were to come in with a book me myself personally everything is bigger than me i can't there's no way shape or form i should ever think that somebody owes me something yeah i well i just want people to do all and right at the I same mean, time if i'm going to be a part of something that's bigger than me then maybe i should um stick up for it once in a while Mm -hmm. You're not just not just having a lie or come up with some. Oh, oh my God! Like, Wouldn't that be objective? great if if somebody just that, said instead of, yeah. "Hey, maybe you like take a real." I I'd really appreciate yeah, the people. Out. You're so good. Dude. I I'd I, I really appreciate the people who like you know who benefit from my being a part of Comic Skate and drawing a lot of attention to it. If they'd actually say once in a while, "Did you read Rack Planet?" Like I know some people haven't gotten it yet, but like. Uh, I read Rec Planet and it's actually worth it. It's like twice as big as it's supposed to be. He made toys. He did all this phenomenal stuff that yeah. nobody in the indie scene has done. Not even Eric July has done what I've done. Uh, and he did it all by himself. You know, he toys, drew, apparel, books, all um, of this stuff. Like maybe, maybe give me a little bit of a break. Like, I'm not saying that customers have to agree with that, but wouldn't it be great if some of the people who uh, I helped get funded actually kind of stuck up for me a little bit instead of going. Ethan's been like the fact that Ethan's late has ruined everything for me and my business. And come, it's bullshit. It's <laughs> like there's no possible way that's true. There's just no possible way. If your book is phenomenal, if your book it's, is good, it, it sounds, you are going to retain your own customers regardless of what I do. You know, it's like that's just the reality of things. Could there, um, some people aren't good. So we don't have the personality to stream and stuff like that, but you can help in many ways other people. NCG can help you. Um, I don't, there's ways that people can help and move things along like a well-oiled machine, you know? Yeah.
Man, but, of course, like everybody should be supporting each other. Like, don't give up just so soon. You know, my thing with Cyberfrog 2 was that Cyberfrog 1 was not well received. It was not enough comic book. It just wasn't enough. People didn't get a big enough bite. It's like, here's a here's a chocolate bar, and I let them have a nibble of it, you know? And it's like, you know, if I got to give them more. a big chunk of story all at yeah. once. And not only that, like, I'm not somebody who writes all the time. So I really put a lot of thought work uh, into uh, the characters, their motivation, who they are. Like, I kept notebooks about what is Heather? what Who is Heather? Why does she act the way that she does? What does she exactly. want? What is she looking for? Like, I, you know, I, I have questions. Exactly. So if you're reading it, this is a real person who's going to react, who's going to, you'll notice Heather has a voice that's consistent through the whole series. And how that's do they because, deal with this person? How does she deal with Cyberfrog compared to how does she deal with it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you know, that's, that takes time, man. That isn't easy. It comes and to then, you and you got to keep them notepads. You write though on paper and pen or pencil and stuff, right? Yeah, and I'll like, take video notes. I'll, <laughs> oh, cool. I'll be driving around in my car. I'll turn on the camera and I'll start talking story and just more. for myself. Yeah. You know, I should do that. It's just, uh, I mean, it's just important. So, like, my attitude with Cyberfrog Two is like, this is where we get everything on the rails. And Cyberfrog Three is going much quicker. This is now page fifteen. It's actually page five, but we're fifteen pages into the book, awesome. uh, and uh, it's. Uh, it's so much better. I mean, it's just so much better that by the time uh, issue three comes out, everybody's saying issue three is going to come out in 2025 and it's going to come out next year, pretty early. Um, the way we're going right now, but, uh, by the time this comes out, there will be one through three is pretty much a complete story. Four is like, almost like, uh, an epilogue. Like it's almost like, uh, where do we go from here? Well, here's where we go from here. Um, so, um, it's going to finally feel like a real world. I just don't, I need to see more people doing this and building on their um, IPs and just making them into uh, substantial places, characters that are kind of three dimensional. Uh, it's important to see that happen. And look, you know, ISOM number one had its problems. ISOM number two is going to have to deliver. You know, it's like, it's just going to have to deliver. It's going to have to be a great story. Um, Inglorious Rex 2 is going to have to deliver Godlike 1. Hopefully, John will have, uh, you know, really given us something with Godlike number one. I backed that. Yeah, I, I did too. I backed it hard because I at least John's art is going to be great no matter what. I don't know about his writing yet. I've never read any of his writing. But, um, man, we got to get stories out there. Story, story, story. Nothing is more important than story. And Cyberfrog is something that could potentially be like the first comic skate the movie, art. TV show. <laughs> the art is what they come for, and the story is what they, you know, uh, that's why they stay is for the story. But the art is what gets them, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the eye candy, and then the story is what they stay for. There you go. The art is what they come for, and the story makes them stay. Art story yeah, well, they. The, I, hopefully the, the art is like, uh, I, I want it to be the other way around. I want them to want to find out what happens. And, you know, it's like, so Cyberfrog, uh, a Cyberfrog 4 will be done in another year too. I mean, it's like doing 48 pages when you're when you know what you're doing. It's a lot quicker. It's just a lot quicker. And I, you'll sorry. you'll notice I'm not live streaming as much. It's because I'm drawing all the time now. Um, you know, I'm I'm just over there drawing. Look at Heather Swain. Looking great. This whole page is where like um, Heather Heather has a lot of qualities of like my wife. And, you know, Andrea will just kind of say things like, I, I just want to help. Like, I want to be a part of this. And I feel like I can't because I'm not an artist. You know, I'm not a YouTuber. And it's like Heather is the same way. Like, Heather's just like, Cyberfrog has a mission. He's got to go somewhere. And Heather's just like, well, I'm coming. And Cyberfrog's like, all right, if you want. Uh, Maybe and then one day I could share um, something like that with a woman of my own who I could trust <laughs> and freaking, you know what I mean? This is great stuff. Ethan, don't act like, um, you're sourcing it off. Do that. You, you gotta, you gotta pull is, stuff from reality. You your like reality a, is great, man. Like, sure. I want a woman who tells me like, I just want to help. I'm like, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's great. And that's what you should do, man. Source from your source from your life, man. Give it to Whoa. us, you know? Yeah, because when you're dealing with real people, then if you're when you're drawing from like reference from real people, 
uh, in terms of your writing. I like, think everything's real everything just becomes a lot more realistic and and relatable it's you know? great you know the great feel the great feeling i'll tell you about writing i don't know if they talk about it too much but man when they start breathing life of their own and you don't have to think you just they they speak for themselves yeah that's like the greatest feeling like i don't have well, to think about what they're gonna say i they just, they're talking to me these characters i, I filled it out I know what these characters, I gave them personalities, and now I'm just having fun right now. Like, that's, I love that stuff, man. Yeah, like, you you just, these characters kind of live and breathe in your head. I don't yes. understand people that want to draw more, or do more than one comic. Like, like in terms of, I, I've got, like, three or four different comics going on at DC uh, as a writer. Like, man, you have. really, that's, it's a lot of, a lot of information to keep Unless in your head. Unless it was a combination. If I were a writer and I could write the final comic, because there has to be a comic, if I'm writing four different stories and they all connect like I was writing for DC, I'd have to, I'll do that if I could get like a crossover event at the end so I could keep track of everything. But if I'm just doing four different stories and four different outcomes that have nothing to do with each other, no way, Jose. That's not yeah. happening. They're not going to be no. good. I'll tell you that. It's best just to say, like, like uh, again, even though I hate Harry, po uh, Harry Potter, not a big fan of J.K. Rowling ordinarily. I even though I like her current like, hey, I'm a turf and women are women thing. Oh, okay. J J.K. Rowling from uh, Harry Potter. She is like the model of how to do things for Comicsgate, in my opinion. How so? In the sense that, well, she cr first of all, it's like she created a world, and then she released she like released a Harry Potter book every year, every year and a half, and that's just it. There are people who used to say to me, and they still do, like. They're so caught up in like the traditional way comics are released. Hey, people are going to forget about Cyberfrog in between like issues, and they're not going to. They're just not going to. That's a, Harry Potter proves that they're they're going to. If you give them enough story uh, with every installment, they're going to stick around. They'll wait for the next one. They'll wait for the. They have lives. You know, they do things in between. They just go oh, new Cyberfrog. I'll read that. Uh, so you just release these things in big story chunks. You call them Harry Potter and the Wand of, you know, whatever, of wishing. Cyberfrog, uh, Wreck Planet, Cyberfrog, Red Extermination. Rather than numbering them necessarily, making a number count, treat them more like movies and installments of a larger story. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just focus on those characters. Like, she didn't bounce around and do a bunch of million things. She, she lives in this world of Harry Potter so that... Her characters grow up and they, they sort of live and breathe and have personalities that people kind of begin to connect with. Yes. Like, that's who I want to be like. I wonder what her white bar looks like. I wonder if she's got like a string theory wall, like just a big wall, just with strings and uh, post-it notes everywhere. I mean, she's got to. She's got to have stuff like that, you know. That's awesome. Uh, let me see. Good Spoiler: Wreck Planet equals cliffhanger. Yeah, I'll always have a cliffhanger too. I believe in that. But uh, graphic novels, keyword novels. Yeah, see that. So it's a different way of doing things. You don't have to be frequent. In fact, like I really think frequency would probably be financially harmful um, yes. because people just sort of get tired of it. It's like, do I have to be somewhere every? You have to build up anticipation uh, for the next installment. Just make the installment big enough and then just build up anticipation for it. You know, it's going to be, uh, it should be Great good. Work. This is my theory. I think it's going to work. If I may, I want to shout somebody out who made like this um, poetic narrative style comic book novel, novel, freaking graphic novel that um, had minimal dialogue or word bubbles, you know? Mm. Um, this guy, uh, Raiden, remember Eudaimonia, Eudaimonia, that book, um, yeah, the, yeah, that guy, the Eudaimonia book, um, what a touching, like two, like two and a half I heard stories good in there. about that. Very touching man. And, um, poetic and very cool and, and, and dark man, but very, um, very sweet and very smart, man. I, I was moved. Very good. Mm. Very good stuff. Very artistic. Here's John who says, Ethan, does it creep Auntie Andra out to be drawn from for the story in Heather? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think she really feels like uh, Heather is supposed to be 
her in some way, even though Heather really isn't her. Uh, Heather, there are, there are aspects of Heather that are her, you know, that are definitely Andrea. Um, Good. but yeah, it's not, they're not one-to-one. -one. Like you can't just go, it'd be easy to go cyber frog is Ethan and you know, Heather is Andrea. It's like, no, that's not true. That's not the case. Like there are aspects of, uh, you know, both of us in both characters, uh, the qualities and, of a woman who upholds that type of a uh, well heather uh, heather represents heather represents what's good about people right you know what i mean like that's so she's not like well heather represents womanhood she's well i'm not, just she, saying she that. Represents I mean, she's your, a woman though yeah she's so a woman but she represents right. your friend that reminds you that there are good things about humanity so she's like your best friend and things and you know the she's the best qualities of what a person could be so sometimes that's andrea you know, because obviously I think Andrew is a really good person, but ultimately she's like a friend. She's like a really good friend. And, uh, that's, that's kind of what she always needs to represent. And she's somebody who like Cyberfrog wants to shield and protect from the evils of, of the world as he sees it. So it's not as though, you know, Heather is like, uh, any one particular person. She's a little bit of everybody that I love. And there's a little of me in there. Uh, you know, and sure. a little bit of, you know, everybody who is, uh, who's been a good friend to me. Uh, that's kind of the way it is. Like Liam Gray. Yeah, there's a little Liam Gray in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think about it though, like I do have too many girls in Cyberfrog and I, I it just happened accidentally because, you know, the Turtles had April O'Neil. So, you know, Cyberfrog has Heather Swain. Sure. It's just. It's a female kind of companion. Well, and that's then, the thing, as I was mentioning, because it's not, you can't, now you have a challenge here, you know? It's great to explore how you, you'd imagine a woman would act in a certain situation. She's a woman, and you got, she's feminine, and she's not a man. You know what I mean? She's not doing what a man does. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, of course not. But, I mean, she's, you know, see, the thing is, she's somebody who wants to participate. I, she'll never be like a Mary Sue. She's flawed. She's mentally ill. That's one great. of the things it's about her sore. as well. You know, she's got death fly. If you read Heart Sick Horror, you can see that it's like she's depressed. Uh, and that's right. one of the reasons why she hangs out with Cyberfrog. But, um, no, it's not guilty. It's, it's like, <laughs> I haven't read it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like her home life wasn't so good, you know, her mom mm -hmm. and dad and all that stuff. So, you know, that's one of the things she's really, really depressed and just wants to, wants to be a friend. She's a, she, you know, see Cyberfrog as a really good friend, et cetera. But, um, yeah, so she's got a daughter, Lily. So already we've got two female protagonists and I'm trying to think like, wh who are my male protagonists, Cyberfrog and like Salamandroid, like a lizard and a frog. I really got to put some uh, guys in here. And then I got Lynx coming up, another girl. But she's just because Salamandroid had a female friend too, Rebecca. I had to, I got to put some dudes in this that are not assholes because Colin is like a protagonist, kind of an antagonist actually, but he's a, he's an asshole. Uh, I need to have some positive male role models in this book aside from our amphibious friends. At the chicken fry. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, I really want to do a battle. This would be way later on in the book. Like once they get into the city, I would love to have a fight within an old decrepit chicken fry restaurant. You know, it's like 20 years. It's been, you know, buried and shit, you know, Vespas in there fighting, fighting within a chicken fry restaurant. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. yeah a common man, a commoner, you know, um, who, who's have, who has a lot of heart and leadership. But has a you know meager you know a little you know meager life you know doesn't really have much uh, going besides that. Besides the men the would fight first and probably lose quickly. Uh, I got I got a uh, means or help out up. at least. Huh? Yeah, well, I, I think most of them are kind of helpful. Um, at least forget is going to be a good male character. Heartsick helped uh, know Heather and her issues. Says old man, y'all. So you read it, yeah? Just you understand who she is. She has difficulty with men. That's the one thing that you learn in Heartsick Horror. 
Um, Chris says, comic says, make a mega boss that's a cyber chicken, and Cyberfrog just dumps it in scalding oil and eats it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Put Joseph Smith in it. I want to put John F. Kennedy Jr. in it. You know? Because, uh, like, there are a couple of people who, a couple of celebrities who are still alive, you know, they didn't die. John F. Kennedy Jr. died, like, in uh, 19, or maybe 2000. 64. Oh, oh, you're talking about uh, Massachusetts? The the yeah. governor of Massachusetts? Or the senator? No, John F. Kennedy Jr., his son, who died in a plane crash, like in 2000. Oh, yes. That was a yeah, conspiracy behind that one. Yeah, I just think he's still alive in uh, the soccer. Oh, football. really? Yeah. Oh, Why would he die? Like, he didn't fly a plane, you know? He'd still be around. He was in an airliner, wasn't he? No, he's a one of these guys who's flying a little private plane. He's a young dude. He was like thirty something, right? He's like a brown haired kind of. Yeah, he's everybody was talking about how handsome he was. He was even in an episode yeah. of Seinfeld. I think he was like probably on People's Magazine as a sexy man alive or something, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Tree Goblin says, "Remember when Finatra used to do the stank stream before he was famous?" I, I'm going to bed. Or I'm, I, I'm trying to switch up my schedule, man. I, I'm not being productive. I haven't got any work done. I can't mm -hmm. keep streaming for, so I can't keep doing it. I gotta, I gotta do work before I actually go and do my actual job because I don't feel like doing shit when I get except getting drunk and babbling. Sorry, people, Ethan. If I'm people need to off. understand. I know. American I, Comics says uh, he owned a magazine. It was called George. Yeah, Ann Coulter loved them. Went to the Chappaquiddick School of Flying. Two women drowned instead of Uncle Teddy's one. Damn, I didn't look at it that way, but that's pretty funny. Mm. I mean, in a dark way. Well, uh, I don't know, guys. Um, maybe I'll just call it a, call it a day. Because I don't mm. feel like drawing on a draw stream anymore. I feel like talking to Finatra. That's not going to, you know, get uh, well, on. Yeah. Um, I do like your the way you lead the eye here. Very good with your composition. The eyes lead the eyes on this one. Yep. Very nice. Down. See how gonna... Cyber Frog's eyes work. Down. But I mean, it's all Look. instinctive, you know? Yep. So another panel will be right here. and uh... You'd be surprised how much people don't. you very easy. You know, we've been doing it for years, though. It's all subtle, you know, but it, it's, um, it's instinctive. Like, you know, it's just yes. a habit, you know? Uh, all right. I appreciate everybody being here. Finatra, great talking to you, my friend. Do, you, do, uh, they, do they know where to um, find your merch? I'm sure that they do. It's in the description. I hope everybody backs Cyberfrog 3 Red Extermination. That's the book that we're drawing right here uh, this morning. Uh, I will come back and do a, another live stream a little bit later. Somebody who is friends with Liam, go talk sense into Liam. And <laughs> look, here's the whole thing. Um, because, uh, we were e-fapping Liam. Stop, stop letting Liam believe that like being angry and being apart from the community and all this stuff is what's best for him. It is not what's best for him. It's not what's best for him or his family. What's best for him and his family is that he come back here, get along with everybody, be a part of this uh, community, be a part of the neighborhood, be a part of the club, make comics, uh, try to make friends. Uh, and sell his comics. If that's what he wants to do, is be a comic book creator, he can't do it alone. I know he thinks he can, but he manifestly cannot. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, go gaslight him. Uh, great, thanks. <laughs> Redeem the lean. Well, let's get him over here, because he's fun, and he should stop uh, listening to negative, dark voices that make him angry, and, you know, uh, get over here and just be a part of the, sh uh, part of the show. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, by the way, thank you, Chris Stanley, for the super sticker. I will see you guys again later today uh, with another video. Let me see. Thank you, Ethan. See you yeah, later, you bet, buddy. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>